Mystics are those whose hearts are on fire with love for the divine, and so Ignatius of Loyola was definitely a mystic. He is someone who masterfully explains the stages of spiritual development and teaches people how to find God in the everyday moments of their lives. His teachings are about hearing your intuition directly and clearly so that you can find your life's purpose and live it. And the story of his own spiritual awakening is so inspiring because he didn't always start out as a spiritual person. Ignatius was a soldier born right here in the Basque region of Spain in the 15th century. Look at this little town of Loyola. It is so peaceful and quiet. But for 16-year-old Ignatius, it was too quiet. He got bored and he left to become a page in the kingdom of Castile. Ignatius desperately wanted to climb the social ladder, so he spent his times in the courts, riding horses and dueling and romancing the ladies until one day he's called to fight a battle in the nearby city of Pamplona. But the battle did not go well. When Ignatius' army arrives, they discover that they are greatly outnumbered. But as a matter of honor, Ignatius refuses to give up the fight. A stream of cannonballs comes crashing through the citadel, and one cannon hits him in the leg, totally shattering his femur. Ignatius falls to the ground and loses consciousness. Eventually, when the battle clears, his enemies rummage through the debris and miraculously they find Ignatius alive. And for some reason, they take pity on him and they decide to help him get home. They put Ignatius on a stretcher and they carry him a hundred kilometers, that's 60 miles, through the forest back here to Loyola. Can you believe that? The journey takes them weeks and on the way, Ignatius' wound becomes infected. When they finally arrive here in Loyola, the doctors are already waiting, but unfortunately, they have to re-break his leg in order to put it back together. Luckily, the surgery goes well, but as his infection subsides and his leg begins to heal, Ignatius notices that his right leg is now slightly shorter than his left, and he doesn't like that at all because he thinks it doesn't make him very attractive. How is he going to become a great warrior and woo the ladies with a deformity like this? He becomes obsessed with his image. And then he asks the doctors to re-break his leg in order to put it back together in the correct position. And they do. And this time they stretch his shorter leg over a rack-like instrument so that it heals in the correct length. And it's completely excruciating and crazy, but Ignatius thinks it's worth it. It's a really dark time in his life because he's so vain and even with this new surgery, it doesn't fix the issue. He's still not able to become a warrior and now he's depressed, his leg is infected and he's bedridden for months, bored out of his mind. The only book in his family home is about the lives of the saints and Ignatius of course couldn't care less about that. But as a last resort, he picks up this book about St. Francis of Assisi and St. Dominic and Mary Magdalene, and he starts to read it, and he reflects on his own life. And over the course of a few weeks, something happens inside Ignatius. He starts imagining what it would be like if he did what the mystics did help people. Giving up this whole knighthood thing and making a real impact on people's lives by helping them find meaning in their own lives. 
And when Ignatius imagines this, this new life, a quiet joy begins to bubble up inside his heart. Maybe it's going to be okay, he thinks. And when his leg finally heals, Ignatius decides to go on a pilgrimage. He's giddy about it. He dresses himself up as a beggar, just like Francis of Assisi. And he leaves his family's stately home to cross mountains and forests and deserts and orchards and vineyards and dozens of little villages. And that's actually why I'm here right now. My father and I are so excited to be walking in the footsteps of St. Ignatius in preparation for our great pilgrimage in May 2023 with a group. And if you would like to join us, we would love to have you. I'm going to be teaching you about the spiritual curriculum Ignatius set out for us. It's called the Spiritual exercises, which is a series of meditations developed by Ignatius to help you understand the stages of the spiritual journey and to teach you how to find God in the everyday moments of your life. It's a method to help you figure out what your intuition is really telling you about who you are and your life purpose and why you're here. We're going to start every day with one of the spiritual exercises. They're like practical strategies to cut through the chaos. And then we're going to spend the rest of the day walking the Camino, sometimes in silence to calm the mind, but always in the peace of nature. If you'd like to come with us, you can get a free trip guide on the website. It will tell you the schedule, the curriculum, and all the details. Go to dancingspirittours.com slash journeys slash Spain or click on the link below. Okay, so back to Ignatius. This beautiful route from his family home in Loyola all the way to Barcelona is the actual route that Ignatius walked after the ordeal with his leg. And it's the journey that we're going to walk too. So Ignatius walks through these breathtaking landscapes and he realizes that walking a pilgrimage is like a metaphor for the spiritual journey. See, you can already see a contrast here between the shallow concerns of his early life and then who Ignatius becomes after his spiritual awakening. It seems that the more misled someone's life is from the past, the more wonderful and dramatic it is when they finally open their hearts to their spirituality. It's like a pattern that we see in the lives of all the mystics. There's opportunity within hardship, if you choose to see it that way. It's called the dark night of the soul. And it's painful, yes, because it usually begins with a serious difficulty, like an illness or a loss, a divorce, or in Ignatius's case, this shattering of his femur and with it, the dreams of his career as a warrior. The dark night starts with a crisis that totally pulls out the rug from under you. But see, it's necessary because it's an opportunity. There's an opportunity and a gift in that crisis if you let God lead you. And that's really what the mystics have mastered. You're invited to a deeper communion with your maker through the hardships of your life. And if you embrace those trials, then you grow in humility because you recognize your own helplessness. And there's power in that because your true power comes not from your ability to resolve your own issues. No, it comes from your ability to surrender to the divine help that is within you and all around you. Look, pain is inevitable. What do you do when you're in pain? What's natural? To resist it, right? To try to do everything you can to alleviate it. But the thing is, what about when you can't? Then what? We pray. We surrender. 
we find ways to discover our own resilience, even if we're not religious, even if we're not spiritual. And as a last resort, in the hour of our need, so many of us find themselves uttering the sentiment of Jesus on the cross. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. It means I surrender to this. Help me get through this because I cannot do this on my own. And it feels like a rock bottom, but this is actually the key moment of transformation because you become less identified with your pain here and less identified with the things of this world. And this is when you can really let go and let your soul reach up to God because that's where relief can be found. It's not that God comes to our rescue because God is always there loving you. But we don't always reach for God when we're doing well in the same way that we reach for God when we're doing badly, right? You can let God use your sufferings of your own life or not. It's your choice. But the point is this. Whatever you're struggling with today, invite God to use those circumstances as a spiritual alchemy like Ignatius. Just turn your heart towards God who is always there. Take a moment to let that in and enjoy this beautiful prayer by Pietro Arupe, a Jesuit who loved Ignatius and who loved the Camino. The prayer goes like this. Nothing is more practical than finding God, that is, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide what you do when you get out of bed in the morning, what you will do with your evenings, how you will spend your weekends, what you will read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything.